I'm a failure. This is what the world is telling us. This is what the media is using its power to demotivate us, to bring fear. You know that media has wounded your spirit, makes you afraid. You don't have to be afraid. When, where Jesus promised in your life? He said, I will never, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I, I didn't leave you orphans. There is the Holy Spirit. Are you ready for rapture? Are you ready to be taken? <coughs> okay, these are times of tribulations. But you know what I have seen in those people? They were persecuted. The boldness. Strong sheep going for slaughter without a fate. No one was crying. No one was screaming. They were bold. And that's not the human flesh. They were Jesus. In every one of them. Hallelujah. Jesus in every one of them. Jesus paid by his blood. A good price. His love turned red. So why? Why you are you scared? He said rejoice when these things happen to you. Rejoice! I said rejoice! We're like scattered sheep running there and we have to be those that we give courage to people. Building people's hearts. You know why this is happening and they are conquering? Because we haven't. We haven't used the power of God. We haven't used the authority that Jesus gave us. We're letting the enemy come in. It's like something like, let them come. Yes, as my brother said, the clouds are coming. And we know that my, tomorrow it rains. But he said, you have to be cared. You have to have your umbrella ready. That's the shield of your faith. That's the shield of your faith. People of God, we're not a church of empty noise. When we sing, when we worship God, that means that we mean whom we are worshiping. The King of Kings, the God of Gods. He is the one that created everything, has all the power. And you know what he said? I gave you my same spirit that rose me from the dead. And that same spirit is function in you. And that power is in you. And Jesus said, you're going to do much more than I did. That's love. That's love. He didn't say, oh, you're going to do less than I did. He's gonna, he said, you're going to do more. More. He said, I gave you authority. What are you doing with, your, with the authority? What are you doing with the name of Jesus? The Prime Minister this week said that every, every entrance of the island is going to be covered. He said there are officials, there are soldiers, there are police. This is the Prime Minister speaking. But you as Christians, what are you seeing? The Prime Minister can use forces, what we have, but you have much more powerful forces. You can surround Malta with the blood of Jesus, if you truly pray daily. Amen. You can bind these people. You can pray for their hearts. These people are having a broken spirit. That's why they are doing these things. These are God's creation. And God created everything perfect. You know what they have left? First, they were taught wrongly. They are deceived people. We must... We must have pain for them. Yes. There are people who have been deceived. Yes. There are people like us. They have feelings. But they stole their consciousness. And we have been given all authority to pray for hearts of people. Yes. Eventually, they are brothers and sisters. Cain and Abel. Jesus said, Cain, where is your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? Yes. We are our brother's keepers, yes. Jesus was his, his brother's keepers. We are his brothers. 
He called us brothers. He didn't call us strangers. He called us brothers. He's our big brother. And we have to be the big brother for these people. What are you doing at work? How are you showing your, your expression about these things? How are you doing? How are you showing your heart? We have a heart that loves. We have a heart that cares. People of God, if you've got a broken spirit inside of you, a wounded spirit, a cursed spirit, you have to cure that. Jesus brought healing for that. Hallelujah. Let's proceed. Proverbs 17. Verse 22 says, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Dry bones, what that does represent? It represents death. But a joyful spirit is your medicine. It's your strength. It's your motivation. Let's not promote fear. We have to promote power. We have to talk to people and say, listen, let's pray. When fear comes, what are you doing? Complaining? Going to supermarkets and fill your, your, your cart with, with all these food and preserve them? Do you know that this is business? Do you know this is a way how to create business? By fooling people? But you're not foolish. You're not, we are not fool people. Because we know even what's going to happen in the future. God revealed all his secrets to us. When you are scared, this is to create business, is to create security, buying weapons, and, and, and changing money because there's a head that is stealing all this money out of him. For one day he makes him powerful. One day he will be the Antichrist and has all the economy under his feet. You know what he's doing? He's making countries loan the money loan money from him and they have to pay him an interest. One day all these countries become under his authority. That's how the Antichrist is going. Because every governor has to pay to this person. Who is he? We don't know, but his spirit is among us. <coughs> so don't be foolish. What you hear on news. All this created, it's not Eisen. It's not the Islamic State. It's used by Islamic State, but there is a person behind all this. There's a, there, there, there is a governor behind all this that is creating these things. Be wise. That's why you have to read the Bible. That's why you have to kneel down and say, God, reveal to me what's going on. He wants to take all your money. He takes all your money. So one day you are all you are in known. That's why the Bible says, "Don't borrow money, but lend money." We're supposed to be lenders. Don't let these things defile you, deceiving you. Be wise, learn, study the word. <coughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs 18 verse 4 says, the, the word of a man's mouth are as deep waters. People, when they speak, the words that come from their mouth, they consume power. Every time. Every time when we speak, those words have power. And the Bible says they've got power to give life 
or to kill. So when you speak your word, examine what you're going to speak. But when people speak to you, just use the shield of faith. Filter it by the word of God. Don't let it affect you. Don't let it kill you. We have to learn how to live this life. That's why in the Acts of the Apostles, they were strong in times of persecution. They were passing into these types of persecution. And Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not afraid to stone me. I don't know how many times they stoned him. They tried to kill him. They put him to prison. Nothing grieved him. In prison, in chase, he said, rejoice. Rejoice. And that's the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So when you speak at home, when you speak to your children, when you speak to your husband, when you speak to your wife, when you speak to your colleagues at, 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 at work, what you're speaking, it counts. The words you speak, it counts. Especially us Christians. Because we've got the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And those words you speak, they have authority. And we're not supposed to curse people. But we are supposed to bless people. With our tongue, we're supposed to build people, not to destroy them. We have to be immune about what people try to bring upon us. That's why he said, deny yourself. Carry the cross and follow me. Deny it. What they speak to you doesn't matter. Jesus didn't, they didn't change him. They told him a lot of things. They told him you are a devil. They told him we cast you out. They told him a lot of things. But it never changed him. It doesn't have to change you. But all you need is the Holy Spirit in how much you invest in the Holy Spirit every day? How much you discuss things with, with, with the Holy Spirit? It's there with you. It's standing there waiting for you. Are you just keeping him there? There's a power in you that you must be activated. Why you are why you are carrying guilt? Why are you carrying the past on you? Why are you still carrying this bitterness, unforgiveness? You know what keeps you this? Pride. Pride. No one wants to bow his head. Jesus did. He bowed his head before us. The King of Kings. God. Himself, he bowed down for our sins. And we carry pride. We have to fight an argument. We have to take the point. Who are we? Who are we? We've got this privilege that Jesus came and washed us, cleansed us, purified us. Let them fight us. But we return in love. Let them try to destroy us. But they will never do it. As the prophet said when they told him, go and curse the Jewish. He said, I can't curse what God blessed. They can't destroy you. Because you're blessed. You are chosen. There was a price paid for you. They paid the price for you. You mean a lot for Jesus. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, 20 to 21. The stomach is satisfied by the fruit of the mouth. One's lips can earn and satisfying income. Dead and life are in the power of the tongue.
Those who love it will eat its fruit. Yes. It depends what you what you're going to receive. You're going to meditate on words that have been spoken unto you for life. You know there are people that are still in pain in wounds of people that they died. But because of those words that this person, when he was alive, told him, are still feeling the grudge, feeling the guilt. There are Christians that Jesus said, I have washed you, I have cleansed you, your past is erased, not put it in my back, erased, cancelled. I remember no more. And you're still meditating on those things. You have a new life. You are a new creation. Hallelujah. You are a new being. Whatever Joseph was before, today I know that I have been chosen. Today I know that Jesus washed me by his blood. Yes. Today I know he cleansed me. Today I know he forgave me. Hallelujah. Today I know that he gave me a new birth, a new beginning. Yes. So what's the use to, to spoil my life on meditating on things of the past? <coughs> And saying because I was abused, because I was this, because of the things they told me. Jesus said, those things have been cleansed, taken off, never existed. And in heaven there is no nothing that remembers these things. If you ask me, Jesus said, I will answer back and said, what? I, don't, I can't understand, I can't remember. There's nothing in your fight. Your fight has been changed. And this was done on the cross. These things were done on, on, on the cross. And he said, sin no more. Sin no more. Because you sin because of these wounds. Because your motivation makes you that you don't want to read the Bible. You feel guilty. You feel dirty. You feel a loser. And these things are caused by wounds in the spirit. That's why he said, who can bear? Who can bear this? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 14.30 says, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Envy. How much we find it in our families? In our life, envy. Because of people, what they said. What, because of what my husband did. Because of my wife did. If it's truly love. Love says, remembers nothing. It is not boast. It doesn't boast in evil. It doesn't, re doesn't remember. So if you study the word. I give time to you. At the moment. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18 6 says, A fool gets into constant fight. His mouth is, is his undoing. His words endanger him. How much we are not responsible of what our words are? We have to be responsible. We have to be responsible, not they have to be responsible. Because when we are easy to start saying, because of Mark, because of John, because of Mary, no, because of me. Whatever they say to me, what I'm going to respond is God's love. It's God's love. We don't revenge. We don't fight. Because Jesus said, God said, I will fight for you, hold your peace. He's there to fight for us. All he asks is, don't be anxious for nothing. Everything in prayers and supplication. Just pray. Just believe God. Just trust God. People of God, take this revelation in your life. Your life will change today. Proverbs 18, verse 8. The words of a gossip are like choice morals. 
they go down to a mess in most parts. Gossiping, talking about people. You know, as Christians, we don't have to do these things. We have to have a clean heart. A pure heart, clean hands before God. You're responsible, yes. If you gossip, you're responsible for, for what, what you are saying from your mouth. God will judge you individually, not in groups. He doesn't care what Mary did to you. You know what his answer is? You know what I did for you? You know that I have paid a price for you? You know when you was a sinner, I was crucified for you? You know when, when you was my enemy, I was your lover? You know that I loved you before you loved me? That's what he's going to answer to us. What are you going to tell him back? Because Mary didn't do this did to me. And John said this about me. And he... No. No. Christians have to be strong. Christians have to show love between one another. We're not an alliance of war. We are an alliance of peace. We bring peace. Jesus came to bring peace spiritually. An idea? Yes, there is a war. In opinions, there is a war. If the word is not according to the will of God, war will start. Because the only truth there is, is the word of God. Whatever the prime minister says, whatever the president says, whatever the, the lawyer says, if it's not according to the will of God, if it's not according to the word, it's all false. The only truth is the word. That's why Pilate said to Jesus, what's truth? What's truth? He is the truth. He is the way. He is our life. <laughs> People of God, let our eyes be open. This morning at church I was teaching them about John chapter 9. When Jesus created the eyes in the blind man. He created his eyes from mud. To prove himself that he is the creator. And he, to prove himself that from dust he created us. If God created us from dust, what he can create in, in all this life we have? Women were created much different from a man's rib. That's why they are more precious, more delicate. You know this? And why? He chose a rib. An old man told me, so to keep your wife next to you, because that's your missing rib. When you are next to your wife, that's your wholeness. That's your fullness in your marriage. He didn't create a wife from your toes or from your hair. Because marriage must have to be next to each other. Hand in hand, walking this journey. And those who are searching for these things, learn this. And those who are struggling at home, change things. Restore your marriage. Don't break it. Don't break it. It brings more sufferings. It brings more challenges. You, can, you will start life from the beginning again. You will lose your time. Time is precious on this earth. I was 19 when I met Marianne. Today, 21 years passed, now I'm getting old. But I invested my time. There was investment. There were struggles? Yes, there was. And I thank God that he was in our midst. Yes, I thank God he was there as, he, as a magnet. Because Satan comes and shakes you. He came and shaked us. But we prayed together. We knelt together. And we waited on God. And God blessed us. And he doesn't, he doesn't bless you because of who you are. He bless you because you open your heart to him. He loves us all. He loves Isaac. 
He loves that man, Jihad, I don't know, John Jihad that they say. He loves him. He cries for him. He's not his enemy. But the demons and the, his sins are God's enemies. Even though he persecuted, still heaven is a long way. He doesn't like people to go and burn in hell. It wasn't created for human beings. But that's a choice that a human being takes. He wants us all back home. He wants us there to enjoy true life. What's this life comparing to God? What's this life comparing to Jesus? What am I going to take from this life if I restore things? He said those who, who will try to restore his life, they will lose it. But those who lose his life will gain it. You, you are trying to fight for a point, for, for, for an argument, to show yourself you proved right? Who cares? Who cares? He didn't fight. Even Jesus, he said, not even one, one word came out of his mouth to defend his case. He said, I can bring a legion of angels and fight for me. But no, this is my mission, to die for sinners. I'm a physician. I'm a doctor. Not for righteous, but for the sick. Not for the healthy, but for the sick. And I consider myself a sick person. We all sick. We all have our failures. We all have our wrongings. There are things that I do, which later I regret and say, Lord, forgive me. I have spoken quickly. We get tired. We have, we have emotions. We get feelings, but how are you going to react to heaven? If you got Jesus in your heart, then let Jesus fight for you. Amen. Just say, God, forgive them. Amen. Jesus, thank you for what you have done on the cross. People of God, meditate on, the, on these words. Because God loves you. Psalms. 147 verse 3 says, He is the brokenhearted. Wow. He binds up their wounds. So there is a good news. First we read that when our wound is spirit, who can bear? But now the good news is that Jesus came to heal our wounds. Jesus came to restore our life. Whatever people say and judge you about. Some of my old friends, they still judge me the way I used to swear. My, my life. But now I know that I was cleansed. Now even in, 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 uh, in John chapter 9, we find that the, 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 the high priest were saying to the blind man, listen, he's a sinner. They were accusing Jesus as a sinner. I said, whatever he is, all I know, he healed me. All I know, I was blind, and now I can see. And that's us, us. We all were blind, and now we can see. Don't let Satan put a veil in your eyes. Take it away in Jesus' name. Get on your feet. And look at tomorrow in a different strength. Every day we get stronger, not weaker. And I am so glad to see these children praying. These are the new generation. God is preparing them for tribulations. They're going to be stronger than we are. Rest, invest in your children the word of God. Thanks for this ministry. Thanks for what Pastor Joe is doing. Bringing, bringing studies to our children. That's the way we have to be. Imagine if all the churches together, we work together. What are we going to achieve? You know why the enemy? is coming to this place to destroy this country. You know that Jesus from the beginning of ministry, he sent Paul on this island. He restored. And now we say we've got eyes in our midst, we've got this in our midst, and we've got gentlemen's clubs, and we've got all these sin parties, and all these, you know why? Because we're not doing our work. We are losing time of fighting each other. We have to build up bridges and not build the building walls. Imagine if we all together stand on the word of God, we will take the land. 
eventually spiritually, eventually by the all the principalities of darkness. We're letting demons coming in our places, getting into our families, and doing a, 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 a hustle, fighting, bringing struggles at home, bringing suffering on our children. We're letting Satan sending his demons in your home and, play, and playing around you and laughing at your face. Stand on your feet and pray. Say, God, I'm going to stand. Hallelujah. So I conclude Mark 2, chapter 17. Worship team, you can, you can prepare. Mark 2, 17 said, Hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I, I did not not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So, Jesus came for Aizen. Jesus came for the Islamic State. Jesus came for the Buddhism. Jesus came for the Hindu. Jesus came for us. And we are the ones, the ambassadors of Jesus, to go and tell them about Jesus. This is not a political issue. We, if we go in love, if we go in, in honest heart, people feel this need and say, this man got something for me, which no one has. No one has, but he has. This man got it. But certain Christians, they go with smell of cigarettes. You, you can smell. You can smell alcohol coming out from them. You can smell sin. Not because of, of cigarettes and our spirits only. Adultery. <coughs> Fornification. Stealing. Stealing is not just go and steal money. You can steal the peace of your wife, the peace of your husband, the peace of your friend. That's stealing too. Because some, they say, I never steal. I never mur mur murdered anyone. But I hate my brother, so you're a murderer. Yes, I can't forgive you are a murderer. You killed him already. I never did adultery. But you wish women, you wish men, so you are in adultery. Because sin is made from mind, soul, and flesh. By thinking, you're already sinning, Jesus said. It's like doing the action. And I conclude with the scripture. Psalms 34 verse 18. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. And save those who are crushed in spirit. People of God stand on your feet. And I want you to exercise something. This morning or this afternoon now. I want you to stand from your from your place and not a member from your family in, in your home family but as a church family and choose a person and pray on him. I want you to get on your feet, go around and pray for someone. And we have to learn to pray for one another. That's the way we have. Don't be a shy. You are a family. Mostly I have to be shy because I'm not used to you all. But I know I can feel you. You are my brothers and my sisters. But just choose someone. Just don't choose the best. Those who are you are used to. Go and find someone that you haven't talked for long. Sister, everyone has to pray for one another. Come on, choose your partner. Start praying. Start open and say what you want me to pray for. And then change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you. That you are building your church of God on Jesus Christ. We have to learn to pray for one another, Lord. And we restore one another, we build one another. 
And Lord, help us today. Be on fire, oh God. And every one of us, Lord, we stand together. Because this was your aim, Lord, that you make us in one family. Lord, you said you are our shepherd, and you want your sheep to gather together. My Father, right now I pray for the pastor of this church, Almighty God, to fill them, O oh God, with all your gladness and your spirit and power. That the way they are building this church so mighty, my God. Father, let your spirit flow upon every single one. And let every heart will be restored, Almighty oh God. I rebuke all wounded spirits. And let, O oh God, your spirit Oh God, to regenerate a new life, regenerate a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now change and find someone else after you finish this prayer. Hallelujah. 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 It's nice to cry. It's nice to open your heart. You can start changing your heart. Let's pray, changing, changing. It makes you feel better. It makes you feel more stronger. It's nice to pray for one another. Some are really enjoying it to see you hugging. Oh, glorious. Oh, Holy Spirit. We praise you, we glorify you, we exalt you for this day. Oh, mighty God. Oh, Heavenly Father. If we only live what you have taught us to live, our life will be harmony. We'll be so secure, oh God. You said the gates of Hades shall not prevail against your church. Unity of love, unity of power. Holy Spirit, we are in the upper room. Refill this place with your fire. Refill this place with your anointing and strength and strength. Oh God. We praise you.
Heavenly Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. And now, I want to hear you worship God again. Hallelujah. I want to hear you worshiping God. And you see how much different will be. So get in, in, in your place, be ready to worship God. Maestro. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All I want you to do is mean the words. Mean them. Mean them from your heart. It's a prayer. Use it as a prayer. Mean it. And you see how the flow of spirit will flow in your life. Give God all the glory. You are. 